I'm Dr. Michael Latola. And I'm Megan Strong. In this week's Case of the Week, we take a look at a dentist whose implants are too close together. And in the news, we'll show you how to get a smile that will get you free drinks for life. And I promise you, I'm really not offended by anything, but I can't take what I see parents doing on YouTube. That and more on today's Chairside Live. Hey now, hello and welcome to episode 134 of Chairside Live, where I just lost a bet on whatever happened to the sham wow guy. Megan, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm channeling Molly Ringwald from yes, you Pretty are. in Pink, um, a classic 80s John Hughes movie. Who John Hughes actually happens to be my favorite, I was he a director, producer? Sure. Home Alone, right. Uncle Buck, right. Pretty in Pink. Right. I could go on for days, people. Just great films. Well, they can go to the website and see you go on for days uh, listing all the John Hughes movies. Uh, I was a little old for that movie. Yeah. Uh, I'm older than you, so kind of our Are seminal you? movie was uh, something called Birth of a Nation. That was really the ones that us kids rallied around and were inspi sure, inspired I... by. That and Citizen Kane. Okay. I'm Oof, just... big topic at school back yeah, in the day. Yeah, uh -huh, sure. Well, we've got an interesting episode for you today. In fact, let's start, start off with the case of the week. We've got a case where a dentist is trying to restore a patient, and we've got two implants that are right next to each other, and it's going to make it very difficult to be able to even get an impression on this case. Let's take a look at what the lab was able to do to help this doctor out. Here's a case from the implant department that we don't see every day, and I thought it pointed out one of the interesting services that we're able to provide you can see these two implants are in close proximity to each other. And uh, the dentist called us or sent this in because she wasn't able to fit either both of the impression copings at the same time, I should say. So there was no way for her to get both of these into place. They would not fit simultaneously. So she put it on the second buy and took one impression and then put it on the first buy and took another impression. And it's kind of hard for us to work like that, even whether it's teeth or implants, we'll see dentists who have, um, you know, multiple preparations on teeth, maybe four teeth that are prepped along here and one of them's missed in the first impression. So they'll take a second impression and it's picked up there and they'll say use, you know, tooth number 10, 11, 12 from impression number one and use 13 and 14 from impression number two. And it's, it's not, it's far from ideal when we have to do that, but with the precision of implants, it becomes even more risky when we do that. So there was no way for her to fit both of these in at the same time. So there's really only two solutions for a conundrum like this. One would be to take the impression coping and prep it. Actually I take both of them and prep it down. So to take a burr and start prepping the titanium down along here, the thick part, it's, you know, this part, the, the fatter part where it wasn't able to fit. But that's kind of tough to do as you go in with a burr. It's not easy to cut titanium like that and to make sure it's going to be um, flat enough so that these will both fit at the same time and then a lot of dentists worry about the accuracy of the impression coping as well if they get rid of some of the indexing features and so it's kind of a dicey thing to do so what we were able to do for her because we actually make uh, our own implants and of course we do custom abutments is we were able to mill her two custom impression copings and you can't see them now because they're in here. So they're titanium custom impression copings where they were designed to fit within these parameters between the cuspid and the first molar and designed so that there would be room for both of those to fit simultaneously. So we were able to actually mill two custom impression copings for her so she could, and she used an open tray technique. And she was able to place both of these in at the same time, verify that they were completely seated and then take an impression. So now we have both these units in the same impression and we're not having to move back and forth between the two and guess. And what we end up with is a nice model now where on the same impression, we've got uh, these two implants, the two implant analogs, and we're gonna go ahead now and mill uh, custom abutments for these and then make a two unit, well, a spl two splinted crowns actually. I was gonna say a two unit bridge. Uh, but really, two uh, splinted crowns are going to go on top of these implants, and with the custom abutments, we'll be able to get nice draw with this without playing uh, any guessing games, which is nice. So if you find yourself in a situation like this where you've got two implants that are really close to each other and you don't feel like you want to go at a um, titanium impression coping, 
with your 556 burr or with a diamond or something like that, know that there is uh, the availability of us being able to mill um, two custom impression copings for you or however many you might need. I think the fee for that is, uh, I think it's $75 uh, per coping, but you know they're both going to fit. You know you're going to get a great impression of them both or three, however many they happen to be, and that um, you're going to get a nice model from it. We're going to be able to make a nice set of custom abutments and subsequent crowns that have a very uh, good chance of fitting once the impression is taken like this. Um, it's a, a nice looking case. Actually, really the only thing, my only complaint is I'm not a huge fan of wax bites. Uh, we have enough teeth here though where we're going to be able to hand articulate this nevertheless so a wax bite uh, isn't all that dangerous in a case like this. Uh, but the wax just is never, it's always pretty flexible and if it comes from the other side of the country like this case did, there's always a chance that uh, it gets too hot and distorts or other things land on it and it starts to distort. So not a, not a big fan of this. Definitely like uh, either polyvinyl bite registration materials or bisacryl bite registration materials like Luxabite uh, are much harder, can't distort, and do not bend like the wax does. Regardless, we've got a nice um, bite here because of all the unprepared teeth that are in articulation, so we know that the mounting is good. And because of the use of a couple of custom impression copings, we now have everything on the same model and can design some custom abutments and two splitted crowns that should fit this patient very well. Thank you for that, Dr. D. You're welcome, my lady. Okay, now let's go to a segment we call Viewer Mail. This week's Viewer Mail comes to us from Dr. Ray Hambukin, and he says, Hello, Dr. Detola and Megan. Hello. I have a theory that most sensitivity on crown preps is due to operator error, and I think that over-drying teeth is often the culprit. In my experience, if teeth are cleaned and sealed before impressions, I have found zero sensitivity issues. As one friend told me, the major cause of endo on teeth with crowns is dentist error. Do it right the first time and it is amazing how nice things can fit. If the dentist would ask the lab to tell them what is wrong with their preps and impressions, they would become better even though they may not like the response. I told my lab years ago if the impression is faulty to call me and tell me what they need me to correct. For example, reduce more, they can't read the margins, etc. I respect their decision and the result is remakes disappear best. Ah, uh, Ray, a man after my own heart. You know, we used to have a checkbox on our lab slip that actually said, call me about my preps and impressions. And so if a dentist wanted to get some feedback on their preps and impressions, they could check that box. Uh, and after 38 years of being a laboratory and nobody checking the box, we decided to take that uh, little sentence off because it didn't seem to be doing much. So um, doctors like yourself who are looking for honest to goodness feedback uh, are, are relatively rare. And uh, it's, a, it's a gift that you're wanting this nods and wanting to get better. And, and the thing is, when you're looking at a polyvinyl impression that you just taken out of somebody's mouth, it's really difficult to be able to read that and accurately see exactly what's going on. Whereas we get to cheat, and when we pour it up in stone and we look at it, it becomes crystal clear whether or not you can see the margin, whether or not the tissue was in the way, or things like that. So um, it, it does help because we're able to see the margin. That's one of the big advantages of digital impressions is that you actually get to see a virtual model on the screen, you know, right there with the patient still in the chair, and you can make corrections then. But yes, getting advice about the prep, did you reduce enough, is it clear enough what I'm doing, that, that's the sign of somebody who really wants to improve. So kudos to you for feeling that way and for giving your lab the permission to give you honest feedback on your preps and impressions. You also mentioned sensitivity on crown preps and saying that most of it was uh, probably operator air and due to over drying and not cleaning and sealing the tooth. And I gotta say, I completely uh, agree with you on that one. It sounds like we do things slightly differently. It sounds like you clean and seal the tooth before the impression. I actually do it after the impression before the temporary goes on. And so we follow Rella Christensen's CR protocol, uh, which was all based on gluma, uh, which is gluma is a combination of glutaraldehyde and hema, hence the gluma. And so all of these solutions, and there are a bunch of other ones like MicroPrime and G5 from Clinician's Choice and GlueSense from Centrix, they're all the same thing, 35% hema, which is a wetting agent, 
and 5% glutaraldehyde, which much like formaldehyde, is a fixing agent and will fix proteins in organic tissue. And so um, the HEMA, the wetting agent, will actually pull the glutaraldehyde through the smear layer on the tooth down into the dentinal tubules to help fix that. Now, Rella's protocol is to take Gluma or one of the several uh, imitations of Gluma that also happen to be much cheaper and take a little micro brush, put it on the tooth, wait one minute, don't blow it off with an air water syringe because if you blow it onto the tissue, uh, the glutaraldehyde will start to burn the tissue. It's a minor burn, but it's one you don't need. And so one minute of uh, the solution sitting on the tooth and then come in with a high volume suction to remove any excess. And then one more coat and wait for one more minute and then again with the high volume suction. And Rella studies have shown that that will kill 99.9% .9 of the bacteria living on that preparation. And so we do that before the temporary goes on, and we also do it before the permanent crown goes on three days to seven days later when the permanent one goes on. Interestingly, we used to just do it before the crown would go on at the very end and kill all the bacteria, but we realized that back in the day we were doing a two-week turnaround from prep to seat. There was two weeks while we had a temporary crown in place, and that was going to fit way worse than the permanent crown. So why were we letting all these bacteria crawl under the temporary rather than putting on this sealer um, before the temporary crown goes on? So now we do it twice because there's probably no such thing as doing it too many times. Each coat's about three microns thick, so there's plenty of room with the virtual dye spacer when we design crowns uh, in CAD CAM. So it's really uh, not an issue to place it before the temporary and before the permanent crown. Uh, I can say, you know, I can't visually look at a prep and go, oh look, I killed 99.9% .9 of the bacteria that are living there. But I can tell you that just like you, I've had post-operative sensitivity on crown preps disappear to almost nothing, you know, with the exception of a tooth that has a huge carious lesion, you know, when they come in, there's sometimes nothing you can do about those. But to your point about doing it right the first time, I really feel like when you see a crown that's got a huge amalgam and it's got a broken cusp or it needs to have a crown, if you do it right that first time, there's a pretty good chance um, that the tooth is going to survive and remain vital for a long time. I really think it's when you have to do that second and that third crown. Those are all insults to that crown having to go back in and reprep it again. And I think you just end up with too much pulpal inflammation. And as a result, that re those repeated insults are what causes the uh, endodontic uh, treatment to be done on those teeth. I feel like you that if you do it right the first time, seal the tooth, take care of it, don't over dry it, don't leave the temporary on forever. In fact, I like three days from prep to seat uh, as the, the short amount of time that we're going to have somebody in a temporary. All those steps go a long way to making sure that tooth remains vital for a long time because once you start doing endo and uh, post and core, we've weakened the tooth and now it becomes brittle. So certainly a vital tooth with a crown on it uh, is almost always going to be better than an endodontically treated tooth with a crown on it. So thank you, Ray. Really appreciate that. What do we have for him for writing in and giving really good advice to our dentist? Well, we've got the mo one of the most interesting pictures I think um, our producer James has picked thus far. I look like I might be on um, some bath salts or some. You look sort yes, of bath salts, or you just appear to be hypnotized. Hypnotized, and, and I don't you know just how it look like. The I gave you the bath pet. salts, and now I'm enjoying the after. after no, you look watching. like the teacher's pet. You look like you're just smiling, paying full attention. Mm. I was an altar row. boy, and that's where I learned that pose. To, to look almost angelic. There you go. I see. Oh, ha. if possible. There's the halo. But you look flat out nuts. I do. Right. I look all fifteen. You look kinds crazy, crazy, lady. So good for Ray. He's so wonderful. Get, Thank you so he's much. He's gonna get some James. craziness Thanks and a Bruxer adjustment and polishing kit. So when he goes next time to adjust crowns, hopefully he doesn't have to adjust crowns, and it sounds like he doesn't have to uh, redo a lot. So he can gift this to a friend if oh, he doesn't actually. Oh, nifty, gifty. I know. Pretty smart, huh? Yeah. Any news today? Yes. There are a number of different ways to deal with a child's tooth that is ready to come out. You can pull it out with your hands, let it fall out naturally, or you can do what this dad did. He pulled out his young daughter's tooth with a bow and arrow. The girl was visibly shaking as her dad prepared to shoot the bow and watched in horror as the tooth came flying out. Did you see this video? I haven't seen the video. I did, it got sent to me and I was about to yeah. watch it now. Okay. First of all, though, I feel like, do you think this happened 40 years ago? No. I, I don't think this would have happened 40 no. years ago. He would have taken it on himself. I think it's the YouTube generation. Yep. Look at her shaking. Oh, my God. Yep. 
How is this not child abuse? Okay, the parents are excited. She's crying, screaming. Oh my God! She's yeah. still. She's not even happy afterwards. No. Oh no. Okay. And look at she's still. She's she's happy, but at the same time, she, look at she's, she yeah. even knows how much therapy she's gonna need. Uh huh. I. Do you see? She just kind of like hit the mom, like hit right. the camera, like stop it, and then uh, the mom proceeds to say, "Give the camera a thumbs up. Come on." And I honestly, I watched in horror. Not that a bow and arrow was used to remove her tooth, but the fact of like you said, um, hashtag child abuse. Right. That's right. not okay. Is it wrong for me? To wish that the father pulls it back and shoots it, and somehow it like bounces, the arrow bounces off a rock and comes back and lodges in his thigh. No, a little <laughs> bit, really, but yes. I, I would like to. Why? There's nothing wrong. There's I don't think there's anything wrong with that. He'd be fine. Right. Well, I mean, uh, seriously, I understand if if an adult wants to do this to another adult. Right. Right. Or try to take out your own wisdom tooth this way. Whatever. Okay. But if you are doing this to a child who is visibly afraid and then is cry like. The pendulum has swung way there's too a, far. There's a, it looks like there might be like a barn in the background. Right. Uh, were the parents born in it? Holy I will say this. smokes. I will say this. When my dad used to put me in the trunk to take me to McDonald's. He's not joking. I'm not joking. Uh, I was whimpering and crying like that. Yeah. Uh, but nobody caught it on camera. Okay. So I could show it to my parents later and go, why'd you do this to me? At right. least she has proof later in life when uh, they don't get anything on Father's mm-hmm. Day, for example, sure. and want to know why, she can say, or well, remember this? Or she needs to uh, make remember a this? claim to her health insurance company and say, see, my, my, my uh, therapy needs to be covered. Was this worth 10,662 views? I'm going to give a thumbs down right now. Thank you. Good. They don't deserve any sort of Hey, support. Henrik. <laughs> yeah. Anything sad. else? Yes. What do you do when happy hour rolls around and you can't find a bottle opener? Well, now you can just use your tooth. A dentist has debuted a 3D printed premolar with grooves that can open bottle caps. As part of an advertisement for the beer company Salta, rugby players who lost teeth during matches were given a unique dental implant with a built-in bottle opener. A dentist in Argentina placed the implants and the video advertisement shows the teeth to work as described. That's pretty interesting, and we, uh, <laughs> we may, I, I doubt they're going to, maybe they will leave it in full time. These are rugby players. Right. I don't know, but wow. And they, the video shows them, like, hanging out with their friends, right. opening up beer bottles and whatever. Um, wow. I feel like you might be able to do this with Bruxer. That's really where I'm thinking, is with solid zirconia, we can make the same kind of tooth. Of course, we mill our own titanium implants and abutments and even impression copings like we showed on the case of the week. So there would be no reason why we couldn't do this. We would just need to find an employee missing a tooth and, and put this in there and then have them bring them here on Chairside Live and have them open some bottles. I'm or, open for it. It is, it's a very interesting concept. Um, you'd have to really be committed to your happy hour because how often are you going to, you know... How often are you using a bottle cap tooth? Right. Well, it looks like you might be able to do FedEx packages, too. I think it might have some more uses that that they haven't mentioned before. Oh, goodness Being able to, uh, I don't know, open various. It's kind of like the Swiss Army knife of uh, of dental crowns. I guess. I don't know. I wonder if they'll leave them in or not. Uh, I would like to make one of these just for fun and put it in uh, somebody's mouth and see if it actually works. That would be pretty cool, though. It would. as As a woman, probably not so much, but as a guy to be able to walk into a party, somebody hands you a Heineken. Is there, you remember that old trick where you go like that and mm-hmm. pretend to open it with your eye? This, you could actually do it with your tooth, just spit the cap out very coolly. And right. You would, awesome. I mean, you would be the coolest person at any party, <laughs> hands down. You would be the no coolest humor person or looks at needed. a University of the Pacific uh, School of Dentistry alumni uh, meeting. That would be about it. Otherwise, I'm not sure you would be all that cool. Well, thank you for that. That about wraps it up for this edition of Chairside Live. On behalf of myself, Megan, the CSL crew, and everybody here at the lab, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry. We'll see you next time. (laughs) (laughs) A couple of troubles? As I was saying that, I thought of what I'm going to say in the open, and so I had to pull back and not say it. A because I was going to say, we're going to take a look at what uh, we, we have a... Uh... Oh, they get the girl was visibly shaking as her dad... Whatever.
go up to the top. A dentist has debuted a 3D printing. Pr Who wrote this? <laughs> it's like a tongue twister. <laughs> You've challenged yourself too much this time. <laughs> dentist debut pre printed premolar printer. It turns out that she sells seashells down by the seashore. As part of it. <laughs> As part of! As part of an advertisement for the beer company Salta, Rugly. Rugly. It's a new sport. They are ugly. It's a new sport. <laughs> it's when ugly people it's pay. When ugly people play rugby. You just appear to be hypnotized. Hypnotized.